Hi YouTube, I really love Power Apps and the way it makes it possible to transform my ideas into great apps. When I started building Power Apps in the beginning of 2018, I noticed that finding good sources on smart building solutions for Power Apps was very hard. That's why I started making videos of my own, to share that the things I learned when working with this great tool to the rest of the community. If you enjoy my video, then subscribe to my channel. So you will get notice when I post other videos. And of course like the video so other people who are trying to learn Power Apps will be able to find them. In case you don't know me, my name is Paul Krohn and now let's go on to Power Apps to learn some stuff. Okay guys, uh, the last month we learned a lot from Power Apps and there was a lot of features bring into Power Apps that we can use. So I thought let's make a mobile app template. So we have a new template we can carry on with doing our applications. And I'm gonna start with a mobile app. So let's go to power apps and then select apps and just say we want to create a new app. And we're gonna use a blank phone lay layout. So now we have a blank layout, so let's call it mobile template. Let's give it a nicer picture, like this one, an orange background. This a, is a app template. Now we shouldn't forget to go to the advanced screen and enable the try and enhance groups control. And be sure that the improved app rendering is also enabled. Now the screen size here, we don't have to do anything. And uh, let's already bring in some media. So we're gonna use a somehow smaller logo and a learn power apps button and the just power apps just to be sure so you see they are a smaller size but we're going to use them in our app so let's save our first app to the cloud and let's close the app because else the uh, enhanced template won't be available for us. And let's open our app. And now we have a totally white app with screen one. And we're gonna build on that. So let's first rename our screen to zero one. Uh, you see me using underscore one a lot. And that's because when I duplicate the screen, all the controls will to go to two. So basically I don't call them here uh, with a name, but I just uh, make like a note beside it, uh, what the screen does and how it works. So we have one screen and what we're basically gonna do, we're gonna build layers on top of our screen. So let's first insert a layer. And the layer which I mean is the group, the experimental group. And let's call this uh, group templates, which is one. This is gonna be just a template we're gonna be able to copy if you want to have a new layer or a new group. So let's go to the uh, width property and set it equal to the parent. And for the height, we're gonna do the same. So now we have a group uh, over our total screen. And we ain't gonna do anything with the rest. Basically because I just don't care. Um, now we're gonna select this and copy this, go to our screen and paste it one time. Do F2 on the button and say this is gonna be our 
header section. And the headers is like the header, the footer, uh, some images we want to show to our customer. And this we're gonna build today. On top of that, we're gonna make another group and say rename other controls. Let's call it like this, because later on we're gonna build controls here. But then you see the foundation. Let's paste this. This is gonna be our user forms. Then we're gonna paste it again. Here we kinda have num keys. So basically a numeric keys. And I have some nice tricks for that. And here we're gonna build our events. screen now is it so that when we would put in a button here and we run our app we can't reach the button and you have to understand that that's because of the groups and on this moment the groups are like a solid surface and I'm in contact with the power apps team to say, okay, we don't want it. We want to have a group as a group and be able to select the button under it. But we want to keep the visibility because on this moment, the visibility of all the above laying groups are blocking our control here. And sometimes it's fine uh, to have the visibility property because controls will inherit from here. So when we have our group template and we say the visibility has to be false then you see the templates inherit this visibility by default so they are invisible and that's a nice behavior because we can do a lot with it okay let's carry on so this is gonna be more videos so in this videos I'm gonna do the header and show you some tricks there uh, after that I'm gonna in the second video have the events then the third videos, I have my user form and the fourth videos, I will make a num key with the knowledge I know now. And this num key we can use for several controls and maybe some calculating. So let's first go to our headers and say to this controls, we want to default set this to false. So when we working here, we can easily can control our controls because basically the other ones aren't there yet. So let's make a design. So you always have to select the part you want your controls in. So if you select the S underscore one, the screen, you put a button in the, will the button be under the screen? And if you take the header, it's going to be in the header. So first let's add a button and another button and say these buttons don't want to have a radius. The vertical alignment is fine, but let's go to the width property and say this should be parents.width. And at the side we can do the X if we want to and set it to zero. So they kind of be over the whole screen. And the top screen we kind of rename to header dot one. And the other we kind of call footer underscore one and it's gonna be our fund foundation so let's uh, one time select them both and say the display mode we want to have a few display modes uh, this means that the color doesn't change when you go over it and it doesn't uh, do a click thing when you click on it it's basically gonna be like a label or a rectangle 
with some text in it. And I'm gonna show you right in a minute why I using uh, a button. So let's first put the header on zero because it has to be on the top. And the footer we always want to have oh in the button. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna relate to the parent. And the parent is in this case our group age uh, underscore one. But because the group is also connected to the parents, by default, the parent height and the parent width, this is gonna be also the parent height. So let's put the height in it. You now will see that our button is underneath our screen. So we can subtract the height of our control and then it's gonna be under. And uh, I post an ID to uh, have a parameter like parent only with me parameter on the ID board. So I will put a description in the video so you can vote and give kudos for that. And I would like to have a parameter like me height. And me height should basically say, okay, I have the height of the control itself. And why do I want to have this parameter? Simply because when I would be able to copy this part to another control, it basically will work. And if it's like this, I basically set the uh, set the relevance of a reverence to another control. And sometimes I don't want that. I just want the control to reverence it itself. And at some other places you will find this uh, more frustrating and time consuming that we can do this. So please vote on this request. So now I want to add an image and let's call this footer image dot one. And this gonna have my control of my, my logo. Okay, with power apps. And let's set the width to the footer dot height. Because I want to have a square box, I will set the width and the height to the footer height. Then I go to the X and set it just to zero. And I go to the Y and I do the same. Parent dot height minus footer image dot height. So it's gonna be nice in the corner. Now I change this alignment to the left and uh, go to the left padding, padding left. And I say this is going to be the foot one dot height plus 10. I want this to be a little bit smaller, uh, like like this, and say created by Power Chrome. And of course, you can put your company name here. So now I have a nice structure. Let's say this is our template. And of course we could also say uh, when we have our basic controls, we want to divide it from a input screen. So later when we have the user forms, we will basically take this design as a base for our uh, user forms. Uh, so what we could do is to insert a image 
say this gonna be the learn power apps let's call this uh, header image that one say the x has to be zero this we want to have Oh, also zero. Then we go here to the width and we say parents dot width. Let's go to the height and put 18 for example or 90. So at the first screen is a little bit bigger which for example a logo we could put in and then say uh, we go to the fill property and we're gonna say this is the same as the header one dot fill and now we could make a like a menu for example to say okay this gonna be different and here we gonna have our first screen and from our first screen we gonna trigger uh, uh, like uh, other screens but basically the other screens are gonna be all on this screen only the user has the uh, things he has to he goes to another screen but in reality we just gonna make a one screen app and what I found is that uh, when you make it a one screen app and use variables to show them or not and use the layers then uh, you don't have the load time of other screens so you get a much faster experience and I really like it so now we have our image our footer our header etc So, uh, this is it for the first video and in the next video we are gonna look at building some events. And you see the events is in the top and that's because this is an admin screen and as an admin we want to trigger events also uh, on runtime, also uh, to, to see if something is wrong. So we really have to see it when uh, app starts that we can run these triggers so that's gonna be the next video and i hope to see you there thanks for watching this brings us to the end of this video again if you enjoyed this video then subscribe to my channel and get a notice on other videos i'll be posting and of course like and share the video so other people who want to learn power apps will be able to find it and use it in their quest my name is paul kroon and I hope you learned something today. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.